Hi, I'm Allison Iron, CEO of Organization Solutions and an adjunct professor at the NUS Business School. I'm here today with Mark Gainsborough. He's the Executive Vice President for Shell's Global Commercial Business. Mark, it's great to have you here today. Great to be here. Now, Mark, you've had a career spanning over 30 years in Shell. Prior to this role, you were overseeing the alternative fuels business, and you were responsible for the uh, future fuels strategy. Could you just tell us a little bit about what future fuels means and why is it important to Shell? Future fuels are important to Shell because you know, we see there's a huge challenge to meet the demand for the growing demand for mobility in the world in a sustainable way. And that's part of the broader energy challenge the world faces with energy demand doubling between uh, 2000 and 2050. More and more people will be living in cities, more and more people will, will need access to mobility which is affordable, which is safe, convenient uh, and environmentally sustainable. Why specifically did you go into biofuels? Biofuels aren't, aren't something that's new for Shell. We've been blending them into our products for over 30 years but on a reasonably small scale. But over the last decade, we've seen the use of biofuels really starting to ramp up very significantly. And one of the drivers for that is, uh, is the recognition that biofuels, one, helps in terms of security of supply, so it's diversifying away from, uh, from oil, but also in terms of CO2 benefits. It's not only biofuels that give you CO2 savings, you can do, actually do a lot with conventional transport fuels, uh, you know, petrol, diesel through more fuel efficient engines and producing cleaner fuels that, that let our uh, auto manufacturers produce more fuel efficient vehicles. So it's not, biofuels isn't the only route to getting lower CO2, but it's one that at Shell we feel is an important part of, uh, of sustainable transportation. Now, Shell is a company that's over 100 years old. How does a company that's so successful and so established move into such a very different kind of business? Well, in, in a way, biofuels isn't so different. I mean, one of the reasons that biofuels is an important part of our alternative energy strategy is it is actually something that's close to our core competence. At the end of the day, biofuels may be produced in a different way. They've been produced from, from crops, but they've, they've, they're liquid fuels. And you know, in Shell, you know, we're good at, at um, making and blending and distributing liquid fuels. So I think one of the advantages of biofuels for us is it was something that was new, but it was close enough to our core competences that we felt we could actually be successful in it. And I think that's one of the things to think about when you're thinking about how you drive growth in your business. You know, thinking about adjacent areas you can move into is very important. That's a great example of how an adjacency move can help to drive growth while controlling for the amount of risk in the action itself. Biofuels is interesting because on the one hand, the product itself is a liquid fuel and, and shell we know how to handle those. But the way it's produced is really an agricultural business and that is quite far from Shell's core competencies. So when we decided to move beyond blending biofuels into actual manufacturing, we decided to do that with a partner who really understood the agricultural business extremely well. And so you're referring to the COSAN joint venture in Brazil? Yeah, we, we, uh, we decided, we looked at all of the available options around biofuels and we decided that the most sustainable of the current biofuels is sugarcane ethanol uh, and especially sugarcane ethanol in Brazil which is the world's most efficient biofuels industry uh, and it's also the one that has the, the best sustainability profile uh, in terms of land use, in terms of the, the life cycle CO2 savings. So we decided that sugarcane ethanol in Brazil was a good bet for Shell. Uh, but we decided that actually going into a, a JV was the, was the route to, to get into the business because we needed a partner who really understood the agricultural side of the business uh, and we wanted to get to scale quickly and uh, sometimes when you're trying to grow step by step you don't get to scale quickly. What were some of the challenges that you as a company faced as you went down this path? One of the biggest challenges of getting into biofuels manufacturing for us was to really assure ourselves that we could do it in a way that was sustainable that met all of our, our corporate social responsibility requirements. And uh, you know, I have to say that you know, probably the biggest thing in getting approval for that, uh, forming that joint venture was the challenge that I had from the board of Royal Dutch Shell about whether I could assure them that we would do, this would be a truly sustainable business. So to make sure that you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, the rights of, uh, of farmers that we would work with, with the rights of the workers in the agricultural business, with the way that we manage land use, that all of these things met Shell's very strict sustainability criteria. And so that's a really great example of also carrying your own company values 
into this completely new business. Yeah, so it, some things stay the same, some things change. You absolutely do have to make sure that you carry your own values into a new business area because as, as you go into something that you don't know, I mean, it, there is more risk in terms of you know, maybe things are done in a way that isn't up to your standards in terms of safety, in terms of environmental performance. So that was something that we were, we were very, uh, very tough on. And uh, you know, we really needed to see that our partner was willing to take on board our values around, around safety performance. And that, that's not easy. You've been on this journey now for several years. If you reflect, what would you say are the key lessons learned about growth from an organization standpoint? One of the key lessons for me is the, the need to find the right partners to work with. And in the case of biofuels, I think you know, we, the big lesson is that we had a lot of existing strengths we could build on. We had strengths in terms of, uh, in terms of our technology capability. We had strengths in terms of our distribution infrastructure uh, for biofuels. So trying to, trying to build on some existing strengths is absolutely key. And there are some parts of the value chain where you're going to need to bring in partners and work with partners to drive the growth. What are some of the other things that Shell has underway in the biofuel space in addition to your COSAN joint venture? The other thing we've been working on for about a decade now is a, a sort of fairly material R&D program looking at advanced biofuels. So these would be biofuels which can be produced from crop residues, wastes, rather than for, from food crops per se. And uh, you know, at some point in time, the competition between food and fuel will, is an issue. Uh, and so we need to be careful. If we want to really scale up biofuels, we need to find these advanced technologies that will use uh, residues and wastes. Now, we know how to make these work already. We've been running at pilot uh, level, and, and we've had some demonstration plants running as well. The challenge is to get those technologies to a sort of fully commercial basis. Such a great example of having such a long-term vision. You, you have to have a long-term vision. In the, in the energy business, uh, you know, thinking long-term is absolutely key. Um, when you look to bring a new fuel into the market, that, that isn't something that you do in the course of uh, you know, months. This is in the course of years and sometimes in, in decades. Let's recap three key growth lessons from Shell's venture into biofuels. First, organizations must have a long-term vision for growth, especially for products that can take years or even decades to commercialize. Secondly, they have to employ the right strategy, leveraging their core capabilities and managing the risk associated with moving away from this. And thirdly, look for others who have the right skills to assist you pick the right partner to achieve shared goals together. In part two, we'll discuss some of the lessons Mark has learned as a growth leader.